Who got some questions? I have a question. Go ahead. Charlie James, could you give me the... I'm in trouble. <laughs> yes, I'm looking for the radial expansion of eucalyptus wood at a relative humidity of 65% at 82 degrees. Could you please expand on that topic? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, is that winter or summer? <laughs> spring. It's actually spring. Where's, where's, uh, uh, so, in the arms. Okay. We should All right, right, let's have some questions. Yeah, see? Right, here we go. Yes. Uh, earlier, a gentleman mentioned that he was very pleased with the technical support from uh, Delta Tools. I was wondering if anybody was willing to uh, let us know any other companies that they found are good, and also if there's any particular manufacturers that they've had very uh, unpleasant experiences with that they, you might want to avoid. Okay, who's like to answer that question? From the audience? Any, any bad reports? On, yeah. Uh, Paul. Grizzly. All right, Grizzly. Good report on Grizzly. Jet, jet. How about Jet? How about Jet? Jet's, Jet's very good. Jet's very good. Yes. Uh, it's about two years ago. I, had, I was a little disappointed with a uh, portable drill, only because I don't use it that much. And the batteries died, and I went to port a cable, and I said, you know, I'll come by, I buy a lot of port a cable, you know, and I told them where I was from, the wood club and all that, and they told me, send the batteries back, send the charger back, even after the guarantee was long gone, and they explained to me that usually it's used by people who use the drill every day, not just people who put it on the shelf a month at a time. And uh, they sent me new batteries and a new charger for the charge. Watch Porta K, we're going to hold a bunch of old dead rules. He brought up a really good point. The club, believe it or not, has a lot of clout with these manufacturers. If you mention you're from a woodworking club, they will give you a little more attention, believe it or not. They, I've noticed, I do that every time now. Because they don't want 200 people ranting, you know, uh, about how, how terrible their technical support is. So that's Grizzly, good. Jet, good. Delta, good. Anybody else? No, no, Mike mentioned that. Uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, a few years back, we had a pretty good relationship with the Walt. Uh, they would actually bring club members in and do, uh, I guess, product development, product evaluation. We did that two or three times. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the product evaluation, we walked over with a 10 inch claw by blade or a nice to Walt sweatshirt or, or a sandal, 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 sandal yeah. one time. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it actually it used to host our meetings for a while on Depot. Yes. So, you know. Yes, in the back, Steve. I can instantly repair tools every day at the shop. And uh, we have quite a cable, we were walking, we had no problem with the wall, they were all pretty decent. The only problem, the only problem I've had any problem with is the Tosh. The brilliant on the tech line, they just leave you hanging. They don't come, you know, I get taxes every day, breakdowns on the tools. They are horrible with it. They quite often send the incorrect part. That's really the only company out of all the ones that I have known with me, tools myself, my own home shop, and then had a problem down on the tech line. So out of all of them, the only problem was that consistently I had a problem with the most part. So I might have some problem. Maybe you should have said it. What do you got? What do you got? No? Okay. Who else? Yes. Skills. Oh. Poor report, a poor report on skill. I, I think I can, I can um, vouch for that too. I have poor results on skill. Craftsman. That's when I was buying Craftsman? Craftsman, yeah. Yes, no. Uh, I got a sink on nail and it was, I thought there was something wrong with it, but out of the box it wasn't. I called them and they didn't want a receipt, they didn't want anything but my address to say we'll send you a new one. They didn't want the old one back, nothing. Just, we'll send you a new one right off the bat. And that what was it? Sanko. <laughs> uh, I also had a great experience with Ryobi. All right, I know that everybody poo-poo's them because they exclusive at Home Depot, but they actually do make very good uh, cordless drills, and they're very lightweight, but very, very, very uh, well made. And if, if, uh, if it fails to operate, and they have a two-year warranty on these tools, which is more than most uh, manufacturers, but if you have any problems with it, like uh, the motor burnt out about uh, almost two years into one of my drills, no questions asked, they just sent me another one. They had, just bring, had me bring it to an authorized uh, repair place just to verify that the motor was shot, and then they just sent it to them. So, uh, Ryobi is actually a good technical uh, customer service, too. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
I also heard uh, something good about Harbor Freight. You know, uh, you, have, you buy something from Harbor Freight, and you, you report something was wrong, or the casting was poor, and they send you a new piece, uh, a new part, and they respond very well. Which is, uh, yeah. The question was, um, is there a list available of all the, the, all the dealers and, and uh, suppliers of tools that give us a discount? And it's, it's a point. We'll work on that. It's a good question. And uh, they make a note of it. I can see they're writing it down as something to look into research. Okay, yes, in the back. Is it a bench lathe or is it a floor model? It's, it's a bench lathe. You know what brand it is? You know what brand? Is it, it, how old is it? How old is it? Oh, I mean, did you, did you run it? Does it take a run? Turn it around? What do I need to check? What's the power? It's probably like a homeowner model like we had at the, at the last seminar. It's probably three quarter less power, I think. It's adequate. You know, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing spindles, like you saw my lathe, I think that's only one horsepower. I believe, yeah. It, 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 hundred bucks. Uh, you know, a hundred bucks is... <laughs> if you make a sander out of it, it doesn't have to be a lathe for a hundred bucks. <laughs> if, you're doing, if you're doing spindles, if you're doing small spindles, the tangential velocity changes it. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? Well, when you start getting like four inches wide, you get a lot of vibration. Yes. Now, now you got a, weight, a lot of weight on you. you got to get that thing centered real good. If you've got a small lathe, it's going to walk around on you. If you're just doing one or two, it's fine. If you're going to do it regular, you want to look at a, a little heavier lathe. Small spindles, small diameter spindles, it's okay. Larger diameters. Like I said, tangential velocity. You, 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 you need more. You need more torque. You don't develop it with a small motor. This next, let's go. Just keep it moving. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, a saw stop is uh, came up with a device that is a safety device for table saw. I don't know whether anybody's heard of it. Yes. And uh, they. Uh, I, I, none of the major manufacturers are picking it up. Uh, now, I don't know whether anybody's actually seen it. That's the first question. And they've also come out with two table saws with this device on it. And I wonder if anybody's seen those devices. And incidentally, uh, they, uh, uh, they're trying to uh, petition the Consumer Product Safety uh, Board to uh, require a, a device of similar nature on all table saws. So uh, if you're interested in pursuing it, you can check their website. But in any case, I just wonder if anybody's seen the device in operation, whether anybody's seen their table saws, and what they're like. OK, Mike can answer that question. There's, there's some words going back and forth on the forum. So let Mike in. I ordered the saw stop originally last year sometime. Uh, the, the saw, the cabinet saw, and it's coming in July, according to the saw stop. They put a picture of it on their website, if you haven't seen that, and uh, in fine print it says, may vary from actual, from this photo. So when I called them and asked them, they said just slight variations, but basically it would be exactly what you, you know, what you see. They told me it's on par with the Powermatic 66, uh, or the, the Unisaw, in terms of, you know, uh, fit and finish, and power and all of that. Uh, and from the very beginning of saw style, which is a great idea, but it was invented by, was it a, a lawyer or a... Uh, it's interesting to talk. No, so, a lawyer would only steal it. He would <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's been very controversial because apparently whatever figures he's going to the manufacturers with, they're balking at it. it. He wants too much, too much. And that seems to be the obstacle with the manufacturers, not to mention that they don't... They, they, there's a liability issue somewhere with them as well um, with using that source stuff. But... Uh, I, I actually got that same email that you probably did regarding that legislation they wanted to pass to require everybody, and I don't agree with that at all. I think that's, you know. How does it function? That answer is that it's a lawyer. It's a, uh, electrical, uh, if, they, if the blade senses any electrical charge, it automatically 
uh, stops the blade within milliseconds and drops the blade down below. The whole thing's holding it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's going to be on. They're going to try to put it on almost uh, every tool they can eventually. Uh, I was at the international woodworking show in Atlanta two years ago, and I actually saw them do it with yeah. the whole hot dog. But it, the whole thing's like a like an airbag almost effect. <coughs> it's gone that right. quick. It's very very fast, and it is very effective. And they have a demonstration video on their website. They run a hot dog right up against the spinning blade, and as soon as the the hot dog uh, uh, you know touches. Boom, it's, it's down and you barely get nicked. I don't know why it doesn't use its hand to damage. It does not, it does not uh, sense wood. It's, it's only some kind of electrical charge. The problem, the problem is that if you buy a, a unit saw today, okay, you can probably keep that saw in good shape regardless of what happens to the company. You buy the saw stop, every time it engages that safety device, you need new parts. That's right. Yeah, That's right. It's $75 a pop. And if you saw it, $2,500, and if, if, you, if, the saw, if that company goes out of business and you engage the safety device a couple of times, you don't have spare parts, you can't convert it to a regular table saw. Yeah, but if you engage that saw once, I think it pays back $2,500. You know, that, that's a little more than Band-Aids. Yeah. yeah I I, for me, I think I'm it's worth it. I'm trying to re-engage it. If I'm going to instruct, instruct uh, people on table saw, I'd rather have them use that and know that you know, they're a little bit safer. Uh, for twenty, you know, if I lose twenty five hundred dollars after a couple of years, you know, it's it's still worth it to me, uh, because that what I'm trying to do is. Would you is, be willing to uh, have those of us who are interested come and see the saw after you get it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah just absolutely. let us know. Just bring your hot dog. Supposed to be here in July. Bring it all the time. Got it. I I Let's keep it down because. It's, this is a ploy. They, they're looking for a petition in order to have this thing implemented uh, through, uh, through put into law. Uh, look, if you build it and it works, they will come, right? Isn't that what they say? So let them make their own saw. Well, you told me you ordered the saw. I remember I contacted them and they said there's no way to retrofit it to any saw. And that was over a year ago. Uh, has, have you seen what the final saw is actually going to look like? They still maintain still that, what you see on the website. This is, uh, they contacted me about about a month ago, I'd say. And uh, just to let me know that everything is moving along and that they expect it to be done in July. And they said it really isn't going to vary from what you see on the website, that black cabinet saw. Uh, the fence is supposed to be a Biesmeyer uh, type fence and uh, everything else about it. Supposed to be fishing, turning, <laughs> or uh, yes, uh, Joe. I got a, I guess a question for Charlie Morris. Uh, I just finished a cutting board, and I wish I had seen this earlier with mineral oil. Uh, have you had any experiences with it? And how long will it take to dry? Yeah. No, it'll just. Absorb itself into the wood, and that'll be it. How about You have to keep putting more mineral oil on it to keep it, uh, you know, any kind of uh, machine or anything like that. Well, will Mike uh, accept sticky. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, he's got a question. Can I answer that? Yeah, all right. This end, I'll hold you uh, When I've done cutting boards, I found that a mixture of mineral oil and melted paraffin. It's a much better finish. And it dries right away. You melt the carbon, you melt the carbon, pour it in the mineral oil, stir it up, and then wipe it off. How about virgin olive oil? No, it gets rancid. Rancid? Rancid. Yeah. And walnut oil doesn't dry either. Okay, now you had a question. No. I was given a Windsor chair. With uh, bent wood back and arms and all the spindles, I think it's called a Windsor chair. But it was it was left out in a barn, and it's uh, while it's physically intact, uh, the uh, the grain is deeply eroded. And I wonder if there's anything that can be done. I fiddle with it, sanding it. If I were to sand down the grain, it would be like wires instead of spindles. But uh, what could be done with that aside from junking it? 
All right, who wants to answer that question? Uh, we have a Windsor chair that has been weathered this severely and uh, can it be resurrected? You started with sanding, it's not your only option. Sanding. Sanding. Don't want anything left. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Epoxy. Epo 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 uh, yes, in the back. Yes. I've been here, I've got a pretty garage door, exterior. And I need to know what's the, the expensive paint rate? What's a good expensive material and uh, how thick do I need to go? They're going to be, each door is going to be 48 inches by 91 inches tall. The glass is going to be on Probably see that. You, you got, what are you going to finish it with? Well, you, you're not interested. Okay, okay. Oh, I'll pay it. It's Bruce. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's Bruce. I mean, I'm not in it. Double square. Are you Yeah, double square. Yeah. I would get stopped. I would go, first of all, I would go to you. How about Luan? Yeah. Luan will come apart. It'll delaminate. Yeah. And fur? Double square? And you get a little expensive, too. Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, where are you going to get your wood? Well, J&A, wood plywood, wherever I can get. Yeah. It, yeah, if, yeah. if you really want to, I was just down in uh, in Rosenzweig in the Bronx. <coughs> I, I go there a lot. Where? Rosenzweig in the Bronx. Oh, okay. They're on 135th Street, right over the Triborough Bridge. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, first exit off in the Bronx. It's on 135th Street. They're right there. And uh, they got a basement. It's a big old warehouse. And uh, they got a basement full of cedar. Uh, all grades, you know. So if you wanted to pick through it, you could. You look at cedar first? You I, look at cedar first? Yeah, you know, cedar is not really a, a strong wood, but it, it holds up quite well, you know. But as, as far as strength goes, it's not really, you know, if you're going to make a, a really long door or a heavy, you know, a big heavy door. But teak. Yeah, I would go with cedar. If you go with anything other than cedar, Make sure that you prime oil, oil-based primer, and don't skip on the primer because that'll that'll, that'll preserve the wood just as, and probably last as long as as, uh, as unprotected cedar wood, if, as long as you maintain it. In the back, you design. Does anybody have any experience with cypress? As a cypress. Door or a door? Yes, cypress. Cypress is good. You know, it also all depends on, on you know what your design is going to be. You know how, how you're going to build. Six lights on top and, and two or three vertical panels on the bottom. Bottom two thirds. Yeah, I, I wouldn't use plywood. That's for sure. I'm sorry. I wouldn't use any kind of the one plywood or I don't know. Exterior plywood. What's the budget? I mean, the budget is going to be about uh, fifteen hundred a door. Mahogany is <laughs> 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 a great exterior. Well, actually, you know, if you if you if you go to a, a, like a place like Rose's like there's or J and A, you can ask them. You know, like uh, you know, at one time, pine was more, quite a bit more than mahogany. Uh, when I had gone to Rose's Bike and built, I ended up making uh, window sills out of mahogany. I was going to paint them anyway, but and I felt guilty about it. But uh, you know, the fine was, the fine was just way too much. <laughs> As the cypress, uh, back in the old days, and I can practice, I can vouch for that. We used to use cypress for posts rather than steel pole. We used posts, but they they stand up and they even petrify somewhat. You know, I have an old house and we still have some.